A barbershop feature is on your plans. Is there any plan for the character rename feature? Are you aware of the time it takes to accumulate Azoth salt in the game? More to come. Yes. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Forge in Eternum where we talk about all things New World. Today I'm here with Dave and Katie and we're going to do our monthly community Q&A. This is where uh, once a month we take questions from all of our social media networks, uh, you know, YouTube, Discord, Twitter, Reddit, Reddit and any other one, uh, uh, threads, That's probably. Literally everywhere. Um, everywhere we can think of. Uh, so with that in mind, let's just dive in and start answering some questions. Are you happy with how many people attempted the sandworm and beat the sandworm? Will you tune future raid content so that it is more likely to be able to be completed by random groups? Uh, yes, we are very happy. I think the win rates are you know, difficult, and that's what we wanted. And I think also want to just say thank you for the PTR feedback. I think it helped us tune this. We got a lot of value out of that. Uh, and it is balanced to be hard. That's a goal we had. We've achieved that. I think what we're counting on is that in the future, gear score will increase, and in that as players get more powerful, that will allow a larger segment of the players to play it. So we want it to be sort of challenging elite content at first, and then open up to more players over time. Yeah, and something pretty cool, like that we got a metric when we had the first uh, the first dub uh -huh. on uh, on I forget which world it was on, but when we got our first win. It had been attempted over 14,000 times. Yep. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And since then, we've had a pretty good roll of so people. So it was one for 14,000? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a crazy ratio. Um, but since then, we've obviously had a roll of other people who have been able to make it through the sandworm. Is there any plan for the character rename feature? Uh, it's something that we are talking about, um, but no plans to share yet uh, with the community. What do you think about adding suggested open world PVP elements such as hot zones and a caravan trading system? Conceptually, I love it. Um, we've talked about both of those a lot. I think that we're not ready to go into any specifics on where how, how you know, time frames we're thinking about those, but at a high level, like I think both of them, the, the open world PVP is just, it's, it's fun, it's cool, and if we can find more ways to make that engaging for players and to give them cool things to do, I think it'll pay off. Yeah, yeah and season three is gonna bring- I was gonna say the same <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's gonna bring yeah. a new way that uh, people are gonna be able to push influence. So um, that's going to hopefully um, bring a lot of uh, open world PVP moments because we're gonna try to get as many folks into certain areas at the same time as possible. So stay tuned for more information on that as we start talking about season three and the expansion. Yeah, it's super cool, but we are gonna push like in the long term we yeah. have plans to push well past yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's just the first step. I was just saying, I actually, I saw a Reddit thread last night about like, oh my God, pushes take too long. Yeah. And this is this change not only is gonna make it way more fun, yeah. it's also gonna make it way more compact, which yeah. I think players are gonna love. Definitely, it directly, I saw that one too, it directly addresses that. <clears throat> Someday we might be able to talk on Reddit. <laughs> Someday. We, we're talking to Reddit right now. <laughs> What's up guys? <laughs> Are you aware of the time it takes to accumulate Azoth salt in the game? It feels rather lengthy. Are there plans to increase the Azoth salt awarded from activities? Thank you. Well, first, you're welcome for, I think, we made a great change on the PvP track. I think the, I think what's happened here is that there's just so, so much good stuff now, right? Like we've really buffed the PVP reward track and I think players wanna spend more. Uh, and we haven't sort of adjusted the salt our rates to account for that. So it's something we're looking at. I think players who played for a while, Katie, you were saying you've accumulated, you know. I hate cap. <laughs> uh, for a long time, I did too. Like there just wasn't enough to spend on. Yeah. So we were thinking salt was too abundant. Uh, but now that there's a lot of good things, we are seeing this more uh, and it's something we're looking at. Yeah. Any plans for fresh start servers this year? They really helped boost the player population last year. Yeah, they definitely did, um, but we have no no plans at this point. Um, that doesn't mean that we definitely won't. It just means that at this point, it's not something that's on our radar for 2023. You know, and I think last year they had that impact because we made so many corrections and changes yeah. to the game that I think it warranted it. Now we've been doing a lot of changes and a lot of tuning, yeah. but I don't think that they've uh, been as substantial, especially in the in the economy. Yeah, and you know, part of that is we want to make uh, the fresh start experience to feel brand new, like what you're saying. 
Um, and a good chunk of that is finishing the revamp of the main story quest line. And that will be throughout this year. So if we were going to talk about fresh start servers, most likely they would be next year. Can you explain your point of view on the desire to add seasonal content instead of real definitive content? Because it is not the temporary quests that will attract new players, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think, you know, I, I consider seasonal content real definitive content. I think it's engaging for the players and it gives, the, the best thing about seasonal content is the laps player can come back and have some engaging content, something to participate in. And it, get, it gives you that reason to come back and check in. We're also looking at, ways to reuse or to keep seasonal content around longer. So if you remember like season one, uh, that whole story didn't go away. We actually kept part of it for new players who would come in uh, after the fact. And we're looking at more ways to do that more and more into the future. So I guess my view is I think it's really cool. I personally as a player like and appreciate it because it makes the game and my goals change every quarter or so. So I, I think it's good. Well, we also have more than than just content that's related to seasons yeah. too. Like we have real definitive content. Uh, like for instance, in season two, we had the Sandworm Elite Trial come out and that was a pretty big hit um, with players in addition to the seasonal content, which keeps things kind of fresh and new. And as Scott said, we keep part of those quest lines so that people can still get the rewards. Um, they can still uh, get the, the band together uh, for the Silver Crows. So um, I, I understand where this person's coming from, but I, I think that we have a pretty good mixture, and we're still working on what that fuel mixture looks like, but I think we have a good mixture. Yeah, and in some cases it even amplifies. Like when the expansion comes out, the reward track is going to be, an, it's going to amplify everything you do, which I think is, you yeah. know, there's a good compliment there. Yeah. yeah. And I think you hit the nail. Like, the, I love the seasonal content too. I think it's thematic. It, it sort of provides fun activities, but I think finding a way to get continued value out of that is something we're looking into, and I think something we'll, we'll invest in more. Yeah. Well, you know, and I didn't even think of this when I first answered, is, is I love the idea of a, an overarching story on top of the main story that continues and keeps pushing forward. I think that is also really fun. Yeah, there's like yeah. the whole reason you're on a turnum, and then yeah. there's your day-to-day -day activities in uh, getting the Silver Crows together and helping out other folks in the turnum. A barbershop feature is on your plans. Can we expect it to be coming next year? Um, it is in our plans. It's something we talk about a lot. So right now, we're talking about the Q&A from season two. Our next communication, like that's kind of forward thinking, is going to be more about the expansion. And then after that, at some point, we'll do a roadmap that goes into a lot more specifics next year. Um, so with that in mind, we are thinking about barbershop, but we're really not ready to talk about it yet. More to come. Yes. <laughs> I know, it's pretty embarrassing. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Can we expect any update to address team imbalances in Outpost Rush and solo arenas in the near future? Uh, so I think, you know, we've seen a lot of OPR matches, especially with Crossworld happening, which has been great just to see the amount of matches uh, dramatically increase and, and queue times come down. I think that's been great. What we have seen with this also though now is a little more polarity in the results. Uh, there's, you know, there have been some matches where there are stops. Uh, we're definitely seeing, you know, in terms of heat maps, the, the spawn camping in terms of score distribution, some lopsided matches. So uh, we, we know it's an issue. Uh, we are starting to look at it. Uh, with that said, you know, matchmaking is a, a huge and complex problem and it will take us a while to sort of get a solution that we're, we're happy with. But we are aware of it, we're looking into it, and we're, we're beginning to work on it. But I mean, the data shows that there's a lot more parity than we expected. It's just what happens is you get stomped and then you remember that a lot more than you remember all the, you know, semi-close matches. Yeah. Yeah, I think especially, you know, we'll talk more about this in Balance of Power, the weapon parity, I think, is, is very strong. But the match parity, you know, there's some good matches and there are definitely some outliers. Yeah. Have you ever thought about reworking the debuff bar? In its current state, it easily gets filled up and is generally hard to read. For example, multiple Fortify effects from different sources all show up as separate shield icons. What's the point? Also, things like Berserk cooldown should show up on the weapon icon and not in the buff bar, in my opinion. Yeah, this is something that we are looking at. I know that also, um, you know, if you have a lot of con and your health, is, your HP is really high, Sometimes that doesn't show up on your bar, um, and so it looks like you're not taking damage even when you are. So this is something that we are we're actively looking at. I don't have an ETA on when things are going to change because that's a pretty complex UX system. 
Um, but it is something that we're looking at, so stay tuned. Will there be the addition of the other siege weapons in OPR? Like, will we be able to swap repeaters on outposts for cannons, etc.? Uh, we are thinking about that. No definitive plans. I think we made some changes to the balance of siege weapons in siege in season two. I think we're going to continue to look at sort of the impact they're having, uh, and I think that's a good way to to shake up the mode a little bit. So, no definitive plans yet, but definitely something we're considering. Yeah. And that is it. Those are all the questions I have here. Cool. Cool. Well, thanks for all the questions. Keep them coming. Um, there's no community question on uh, the Q and A, so other, otherwise, I'll just say if you like what you saw, subscribe, like, and do all those cool things, and we'll see you uh, next week. Yeah. And see you in the turn. And see you in the turn. There are some new combos that uh, experts, uh, in quotations if you know what I mean, are pulling off here with, uh, with the blunderbuss. Uh, those are things we did not anticipate as a part of the design, and uh, it would not surprise me uh, when you load up the uh, monthly patch if those combos are no longer possible. Yeah.